Did you know that in 2021, 47% of employees left their job? Did you know that 70% of that was voluntary turnover, meaning they quit? And did you know that on average, it costs you 50% of an employee's salary in order to replace them? That means when you add up the cost of advertising, the time spent going through applications and resumes and sitting on interviews, plus all of the lost productivity in the business while that person is missing, that if you take a $60,000 a year employee, it'll cost you $30,000 just to replace them. What if I told you though, that I haven't lost a team member in five years. So here's how to keep your team members and keep them loving their work. This is my man, Jiala Kanai. Jiala Kanai, he takes entrepreneurs on a journey to grow their business. So here's six principles that I developed over the years to help keep your team members and keep them happy. Number one, praise versus reprimand. I walked into our office one day and I found one of our managers scolding one of our team members pretty much in front of her peers. When that was all done, I pulled the manager aside and I said, listen, you can praise in public, but you reprimand in private. People need to be praised in front of their peers for the work that they're doing well. And the award for, for the, the handsomest, handsomest videographer, videographer in the industry, in the industry goes, goes to Sam Sir Video! Thank you. But when there's a mistake, when something is going wrong, that's a one-to-one -one conversation. Number two, safe versus comfortable. Never threaten team members' jobs because they need to feel that they're in an environment where they are safe, where nobody's trying to take away their job, take away their livelihood, nobody's trying to stab them in the back. Hey Sam, listen, if these NWA reports are late one more time, you're fired. You get it? And at the same time, they can't feel comfortable. They need to be held to high standards. Team members are gonna be happy when they feel safe at their work, but not comfortable. Meaning that they're being challenged to continue to exceed goals. Hey Sam, you got a minute? Yeah. Listen, uh, you've missed the deadline on these NWA reports a few times now. And so if there's something that we can do to support you in helping hit the deadlines, just let us know. We're happy to you know, offer you any resources we can. At the same time though, we're not gonna lower the expectations because we have high standards here for a reason. Make sense? Yeah, understood. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, thank you. Number three, clear expectations. Every one of our team members gets a what we call a mission and RR document. The RR stands for roles and responsibilities. Roles and responsibilities are pretty mundane. It's basically just the random stuff that you do every day. But the mission is a clear, measurable result that they need to accomplish within 12 months. For example, add $300,000 a year to top line revenue, or add an additional 10% profit margin to the bottom line. Things that are clearly measured, and at the end of 12 months, we can clearly see did they accomplish the goal or not. And then inside of that document, we'll give them the mission and some key objectives. Key objectives are the underlying pillars that if they accomplish those key objectives, the mission will also be accomplished. This way, everybody is on the same page about exactly what success looks like in their role. All right, Sam, this is a mission in RR document. This is gonna clearly define what success looks like in your role. So these are the things you have to hit within 12 months. Your mission is up here at the top. It's plainly stated that it's to add about 10,000 subscribers per month on average to our YouTube channel. Down here's the key objectives that you'll need to accomplish in order to make that happen. As you can see, one of them is gonna to be to add a couple of editors to your team. So assuming that you go through all of this and you agree to it, we can go ahead and sign. And I wanna be clear, by the way, that sometimes these things change over time. It's an organic document because sometimes the needs of the business might change. But any changes that we make will be documented here so that 12 months from now we can look back and measure whether or not your role was a success. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you agree to it, then just go ahead and sign. Okay. Mm. I mean, that's a first, dude, but we did hire you for creativity. Number four, exploration versus accusation. I don't come to my team members and go, hey, this is messed up. What happened here? Sam, you're holding up this entire freaking project. What are you, incompetent or something? Instead, what I say is, hey, it looks like we missed the mark here. Where did the communication go wrong? What could we have done differently? Was there something that you misunderstood along the way? And I'm exploring ways in which we can improve both myself as a leader and us as a whole as an organization to improve the outcomes in our business, rather than accusing people of being incompetent in their roles. Hey, so Sam, man, a few of your items on this project have been falling behind the deadlines, and so it seems that you're dragging it back a little bit. 
Now, is there something that we could do differently to help support you? I mean, is it, do you think it's the communication? Maybe you need some help with the project management software? Is it maybe something that I'm saying that's not working? What can we do to help you? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of noticed that too. I was lagging behind. Do you have a few minutes to chat about it? Of course. Number five is responsible communication. Very similarly related to number four. Now my philosophy on communication is that communication is the result I get. Therefore, it doesn't matter what I think that I communicated, what I think that I said, or what I think that I asked for, if the result that I get in return is in contrast to what I think that I communicated, then there's no longer an accusation and coming in and saying, hey, well, how did you get this wrong? Instead, it's taking the time to explore, where did our lines get crossed? So I'm gonna be asking things like, hey, where do you think our communication broke down here? Or what was it that I said that caused you to think that the end result was gonna be this? And to smooth out the communication so that we can communicate more cohesively as an organization. Come on in. Hey buddy, you got a quick minute? Yeah. Hey dude, so I just reviewed the uh, YouTube video that you submitted and uh, you can't play f the police on a YouTube video, man. You did say make it aggressive. You're right, I did say that. So obviously I need to be more clear in my instructions. And at the same time, if you feel that something is unclear, you know, feel free to ask. Yeah, no problem. It will never happen again. Perfect. Number six is results versus intentions. Notice that oftentimes when people get upset at us, we fall back on our intentions. We say, hey, I didn't mean it that way, or I didn't mean for that to happen. Now notice if we're gonna give ourselves that grace, why not give that same grace to others? Hey Sam, real quick man, you're way behind on some of these edits that's been going on for a while, what's happening? Oh yeah, about that. I've been testing out some new software to make our edits better, and it's just kind of been taking a while to learn. Well, that makes sense. Is there a way that we could do both, like test out the software, but also still hit the deadlines? Yeah, um, I, I think that'd work. Um, you wanna chat about it? Yep. So when people on my team deliver a poor result, but with great intentions, I'm not gonna get upset at them. See, I don't wanna be slapping people's hands if they made a mistake, but with good intentions. Because if we're slapping people's hands too often, then what happens is that they're afraid to take risks in their role. Where the f are the edits? Now, in order for a business to grow, it must take risks. And so if people are being reprimanded too often, they become afraid. Instead, I wanna encourage people to continue to take risks within the parameters of their role so that we can grow. So listen, I hope you got great value out of this video, my friend. And if you are somebody who is committed to success in your life and your business, then make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you get notified every week when I drop more fun content like this. And in case you've never met before, my name is Cal Kanai. I'm an entrepreneur that went from working in a coffee shop for minimum wage to earning over $100 million in my online business, which I only say so that you know that everything I share on my channel comes from real world applied knowledge of things that I've learned and executed that help me get those results, and I share it here so it helps you get similar results as well. So make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you get notified every week, and watch this next video in the lineup. We're gonna talk more about business strategies.